hoarded probate real estate, how to make the most money from a hoarded home. That's what we're talking about today and we're gonna get started right after this. What exactly is a hoarded home? And if you've become responsible for a property that appears to be hoarded, what is your responsibility around dealing with the amount of personal property? And how to make the most money when it's a hoarded home, especially when it's a hoarded probate real estate. Welcome back to my channel. If we haven't yet met, I'm Kim Ward. I'm an expert at helping with all types of homes in probate or trust administration. I work and live in beautiful San Diego and work the entire area around San Diego. I'm here to help. So let's start with the definition of a hoard. A hoarded home is a home that someone has lived in for years and it's often kind of beat up or you know left in disrepair by the owner. That owner may have a hoarding disorder which is a diagnosable condition by the American Psychiatric Association. And it's in the manual that many professionals use to diagnose mental disorders, the DSM. It's hoarding is a perceived need to acquire and to hold on to many things that are not even worth anything. And I've had experience where it's an endless amount of things and the person, your loved one, may have not been able to let go of any of those items, may have caused them a lot of stress to even think about letting go of their items. You know, what may seem like trash to us does not seem like trash to that person that has a hoarding disorder. And the result can be a very unsanitary situation. According to the Mayo Clinic, hoarding often leads to such cramped living conditions that homes may be filled to capacity and only narrow pathways winding through stacks of clutter. Now hoarding does range from mild to quite severe. And many people live in this environment for years and when they pass away, the situation becomes the responsibility of a family member. On top of the sorrow of losing a loved one, the family members are stuck with how to handle everything that's left behind. And it may be a brand new situation for the family members and they truly do not know what to do. With so much stuff, selling a hoarder home and all those things may become so overwhelming to the family members. Some people have thought it would be impossible to sell the homes that I've helped with. And hoarding situations are often very complicated. And if when it comes to selling a hoarder home, if you want to get market value for the home, much of the time it needs to be cleared out and cost effective repairs need to be made. If you're wanting to sell to a traditional home buyer, then there's a lot that's going to need to be done to make it desirable to that traditional home buyer. That not only takes time, but it takes a lot of money. As I said earlier, the condition of the home has been years of neglect on the property, and it's probably going to need much more than just a coat of paint or a replacement of flooring. Some common scenarios when handling a hoarder house include the following, structural problems, dead animals, rotten walls and floorboards, biological waste, both animal and sometimes human, major problems everywhere, an extreme cleaning, would need to be done and a crew would need to be brought in. Sometimes it requires heavy duty equipment such as hazmat suits. There's going to be pest control, handling the heavy odors. These odors can permeate all the surfaces of the property. We're talking walls, ceilings, floors, counters, all may have to be removed. This is so much work beyond what's normal much more than, like I said, paint or replacing carpet or just doing some cleanup, and it can become a full-time project. If you don't live in the area, you might wanna hire a contractor to be able to oversee everything. You'll need a trustworthy person to oversee just the clean out of the property. And then if you want cost-effective repairs done, just depending on what the situation is, it's possible. I have helped with those situations. I just recently helped with a minimal hoarding situation where I got a roll-off container, a dumpster brought to the property and hired a crew to go in and just remove everything and get it into the dumpster and drive it away. 
We were then thinking of doing some cost-effective repairs, but after we took a look at everything, the seller and I decided that the best option was to sell as is in that particular case. So let's get into what does it really cost to fix up and to sell this type of property. Of course, this depends on where you live and how much damage there is to the property. According to a website, fixer.com, that's F-I-X-R.com. The national average for a mild cleanup is between $3,000 and $5,000. This would be for a roughly 2,000 square foot house or smaller. You can count on about $1,000 a day, roughly, for larger homes. But if there happen to be human wastes, hazardous materials, or other extreme cleanups, this could actually go to upwards of $25,000. And that's just for cleaning out the property. That doesn't include making the home ready to sell. That's just removing the personal items and the trash and getting to the point where we can actually see the condition of the walls, the floors, the ceiling, the cabinets. So there is no telling what we're going to find once we pull everything out of the property and put it into the dumpster. In the case of the recent help that I did on the mild hoarding home, once we started really looking at all the things that would need to be addressed, it just made more sense to sell the property as is. So to reiterate, it just depends on what we find under the hoard as to whether sometimes things can just be cleaned a bit and some paint put in and maybe new hardware, maybe new carpeting, and, and then it's okay to sell the property to more of a conventional buyer versus selling as is to an investor. I'm going to be helping on a home in Chula Vista that is a mild hoard. It's a pretty clean hoard and we are going to be planning on doing cost-effective repairs. Now that particular home, the lack of care to the property extended into the yard, so that's going to turn into a whole other experience for me because I typically don't help with yard work, like extensive yard work. Of course, I can get a gardener in there to do some minimal cleanup and put in some bark and trim some trees, things like that, but this is going to need quite a bit of work, so that will be a future video. So selling a hoarder home is not selling in the old fashioned conventional way. And it may not be your best option to do any repairs at all. I always help my clients to look at the numbers as is. If we do $30,000 worth of repairs, what is the difference? I wanna make sure that the return on the investment is going to be worth to my seller to you to go through all of the effort and the expense of doing those repairs. So I'm sure you're wondering, do real estate agents specialize in this type of work in helping with hordes and helping with cost-effective repairs? I have to tell you that most real estate agents will be at a loss on what to do. They will just immediately say, oh, let's just sell it as is. They won't even try and think of the other options that are available to you and the estate to get the most money from your loved one's home. And in many cases, just like you, the real estate agents may not wanna take on all that extra work because believe me, it's a lot of work to get a hoarder home into a position that it can be sold on the open market as a conventional sale. So most real estate agents are not equipped to handle this and that's something that you just need to be aware of so that you make sure that when you choose someone to help you, especially when you live out of the San Diego area or whatever area your loved one's home is, when you live outside of that area, you're gonna need someone who can actually help to guide you to what your best option is. Because generally, when you're working with a real estate agent, you're hiring them to list the property and take you through the sales process. To just list the property, get photos, put it on the multiple listing, get it out there in the open market, to get it on Zillow, Realtor.com, and Trulia, for instance, you're not hiring that person to totally overhaul a house. So if you choose just to sell the house as is with any type of real estate agent, I suppose you could do that, but why not get someone who really can give you your options and make it as simple as possible for you? My team and I have helped many people through this process. I've even helped with homes that are so extremely hoarded that we hired a team to go in and make sure they look through everything to make sure something hadn't been lost because my client lived in Denver, Colorado. The house was in Poway, an area of San Diego. 
and she just couldn't see herself going through the hoard. That was stacked up to here, here, with stuff. And so I hired a company to go in and basically they went through every bit of paper and boxes and everything that was in this home. And they actually did find two safes. So then I came up with a solution on how to get into the safes because of course nobody knew the combination and hired a locksmith to come in. He got into the safes and in there was $3,000 that I then got to my seller. She was an executor of an estate. I sent that to her in Denver to put with the proceeds of the estate. Now, if you decide to sell as is, there is a part about being somewhat discreet and not publishing all types of photos out there on the internet. So that's something that I also am aware of to be a little bit discreet about the condition of the home. Of course, the people that go into the home to consider buying it, they are going to see the condition of it, but we don't need to have it out there for everybody to see. So on top of the situation of finding buyers to purchase a hoarder home, that is another thing to consider. Because I have been helping with estate situations for almost 20 years now, I have a list of investors that specifically want homes that need this type of repair. So the way that I address this is once the home is on the market, it's out there for anyone to see, then I make sure that my team, we email all of the people, the investors that are on my email list. I have somewhere around 80 people. So they are aware quickly that this home is available. I'm trying to think of ways to market these types of homes so that we get the most buyer interest because you're looking for a specific type of buyer of a hoarder home. So in many of these situations, it is an investor or investors that have the interest in the property. Many of my clients have told me that when they become responsible for a home that's in probate, when they become the executor or the administrator, they receive many phone calls and a lot of mail from investors offering to purchase the home. I have another video on that and the link will be somewhere up here, maybe up here. And you might want to watch that about what it's like to sell to an investor without any specific type of help that someone like me and my team would provide to get you through the preparation, the marketing and the selling at the highest price and best terms. That video is how much will an investor pay for a house? You may choose, like I said, to just sell as is, skipping the cleanup and the repairs. You are gonna to wanna to make sure someone, either you and your family or someone that we can put into that position will go through all of the personal property to make sure that nothing of importance or extreme value is left in the home. On Monday, I am gonna be going to this home that I'm helping with in Chula Vista to get some people to go through everything in the garage because my client fears that her father, who had Alzheimer's, would put some things like bonds. He, he liked to buy bonds and she was concerned that he would have stashed those in the garage amidst some of the tools or something like that. So I'm gonna make sure that someone goes through everything that's in there prior to either selling some of the things that are in the garage or perhaps selling the house with all the remaining personal property. I'm just about to finish helping on a home in Ocean Beach that the clients lived in Albuquerque and there were some things left in the property and we talked about hiring someone to empty the things out, but instead we chose to put into the contract with the buyer that any remaining personal property would become the buyer's responsibility. This is how I do things, saving money, time, and effort so my clients don't have to come from Albuquerque to here, to San Diego, to just handle what's left in the house. It's now going to be the buyer's responsibility. And if you decide to sell the home as is, I have negotiated short timelines on these. The property I was just sharing about in Ocean Beach, we have a 14-day close of escrow date, and that's from after negotiating the offer, to the close of escrow, a mere 14 days, and it's sold as is. And when there's a short timeline like this, that relieves you of the responsibility quicker, the responsibility of the house, and you can continue on with the difficult task of the rest of the remaining things that need to be done in order to finish the closing of the estate so that you can get back to your life. 
I hope you found this of value. If you did, give me a like, thumbs up. Go ahead and comment below and subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell button so you're notified of my weekly videos. I'll see you next week. Thank you.